happy Wall Street Wednesday, everybody. Um, welcome back to my channel. It's Lance here, co-founder of BH Capital Enterprises and also long-time Abacus member where I am a team leader. Um, and basically that means I'm responsible for uh, some people, uh, basically the people that I refer uh, to the system. Um, so basically I make it my mission to... Uh, help them navigate um, the system uh, as well as the markets on their way to whatever their financial goals may be. Um, and of course, if you have any questions about the Abacus, feel free to hit me up, leave a comment, whatever works best for you. Um, I'll leave my contact information in the description box so that, so that you can find me easily. I'm on the main social media platforms, I won't say all of them, but Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, of course. Um, but uh, today I wanted to focus on cannabis. Um, and uh, that, like I said in a previous video, uh, that's pretty much what I'll do on Wednesdays is is be uh, have my topic centered around some to some you know cannabis industry relevant type of uh, discussion. Um, and today I want to do a small little case study on Tilray. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I am working on a project. It's a long-term project, basically where I am quantifying cannabis companies. So I'm starting with all the publicly traded companies, cannabis companies that is, and uh, I've come up with a little system for myself that basically allows me to quantify whether the company is may be a worthy investment or may not be worthy of of an investment at all or even you know much of my time so uh, you can get access to that for 25 bucks a month and basically follow me along my journey and uh, yeah that's it so let's get started with Tilray <clears throat> so Tilray of course is on my spreadsheet um, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, go into, you know, how I scored it or anything like that, but just going to talk a bit briefly about Tilray. And of course, you want to do your own due diligence and you definitely want to conduct research beyond, well beyond what I'll discuss in this video. But at least this video can give you a start on, you know, where to look, how to look, you know, things like that. So Tilray. Tilray is a global uh, cannabis cultivator, uh, emphasis on global, uh, and the company likes to place an emphasis on global. Um, so they're involved in basically almost every, uh, every step of the process from uh, growing to cultivating and extracting, you know, typical, just like, you know, a lot of the, the, the other major cannabis companies um, but like I said the emphasis here being on global uh, Tilray was one of the first cannabis companies to go public on a major exchange in the United States so that's a that's a pretty interesting fact um, but the thing that makes Tilray interesting to me is that they put a lot of emphasis on the medicinal side of things so while everybody was grabbing up and, and, and uh, putting a lot of focus on the recreational side of things, Tilray has been going hard in the paint on the medicinal side. Now, that's not to say that Tilray is not involved in recreational cannabis, because, because they definitely are, but... I feel like a big focus of this company is in the on the medicinal side of cannabis. Um, so basically what they're working on is building a global distribution network and they're partnering with many different factions in the respective company uh, countries, I'm sorry, countries that they're located in currently uh, to dis distribute their product. So whether it be, you know, clinical trials with universities and, and, and medical institutions, they're doing all of those things. Um, they recently uh, gained interest into Israel 
And if you know anything about Israel, it's a huge, huge, huge market for medical cannabis in terms of research. Um, I, I venture to say that Israel is steps ahead of probably most most if not all countries in the world when it comes to the research the efforts the resources that are involved in medical cannabis research so research is a huge 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 deal over in israel um however access to product is you know a, a smaller deal you know um but yeah, so I, I think it's a great thing for a company, a foreign company at that, to be able to gain entrance into that market and participate in those uh, clinical studies that are being conducted um, over in Israel. And Tilray happens to be one of those uh, companies. Um, also Australia. So Australia is a pretty tough market uh, when it comes to importing and so or exporting. Um, and so Tilray has gained interest in that, into that market. So some of their products are being, uh, used for clinical trials there. So that's definitely a good sign for the company, um, in terms of, you know, long-term potential. Um, let's see, what else can I, what else can I really say? Uh, Tilray also is focusing on, um, the recreational side in terms of uh, like edibles and CBD and stuff like that. And that came along with their purchase of a big, uh, what was claimed to be one of the biggest um, companies in that respective space in terms of hemp products and, you know, ingestibles and things like that. And that is Manitoba Harvest. So Manitoba Harvest is a global company as well, and I think right about now, Manitoba Harvest is, they make up maybe about 35% of Tilray's overall revenue. Um, flour is about 50 uh, or something like that, and then the rest is like extracts and stuff like that. Um, so, a lot of growth potential um, in terms of revenue on the extract side and of course also the uh, hemp side of things so that's something that you know I I would encourage uh, people to keep an eye on um, some things about the industry overall and it shows in Tilray's numbers is that flour is becoming less I won't say less popular but people are using more derivative products instead of the flour, you know. So, uh, if you look at a trend of <clears throat> um, Tilray's revenue derived from dried flour, it has trended down slowly over time. So, that's that's something that is uh, what what is the word I'm looking for? It's it's you it's typical for the industry right now the industry overall so don't think that that's something that is you know specific to Tilray and Tilray only so um, that's an industry-wide thing um, what else can I say about uh, their revenue um, also uh, another interesting fact that I like about Tilray is their Portugal facility. So their Portugal facility is exempt from EU tariffs. So naturally the company's goal is to make that facility their main distribution center. So exporting product from Portugal to, to all their facilities all over the world and especially in the European Union um, so things like that would allow for Tilray to have higher margin products you know what I'm saying because they're not paying tariffs on on those particular products so that'll that'll allow them to boost the bottom line a little bit in that in that particular segment so 
I think that's uh, important to make note of. Um, so in the future, watch out for any news regarding that Portugal facility. Um, watch out for news about uh, additional GMP certifications. That's a pretty big thing. Definitely a big deal in um, Europe for sure. Uh, let's see. Recent management changes. Um, Tilray actually share price uh, went bullish uh, just the other day at the announcement of um, a former Revlon executive and a former uh, another former executive who uh, another executive who was formerly working at Molson Coors and a uh, integrative pharmacy called Pharmaca. Um, and I had never heard of that that company before. But I looked it up and did a little bit of research, and uh, so Pharmaca is a pretty unique pharmacy in terms of what I've seen, um, and that's because they have a focus not only on traditional medicine, but also like homeopathic stuff and uh, um you know not not your traditional Western medicine. So they have that. But there's also a big emphasis on those natural medicines as well. And it turns out one of my favorite supplements um, is made by one of their subsidiaries, Garden of Life. I love the Vitamin Code products. Um, I actually read the book that, um, it's a very short book, but very interesting. Um, but it details how the vitamin code brand of vitamins are made and basically what differentiates those partic that particular line of supplements from everything else. So anyway, didn't want to get off on a tangent, but so there's a guy that used to work for Pharmaca and he also used to work for uh, Molson & Coors who now is an executive at Tilray. So that has me thinking that maybe Tilray is planning to expand uh, their business segment into um, probably beauty products and stuff like that. Um, so not just um, hemp in terms of edible products, you know. Um, so I think that they're definitely already, you know, doing some research with uh, developing a beverage. So that's, you know, that's known. But I think they're going to be expanding into the beauty industry as well, um, especially with picking up those two um, executives. So be, out, be on the lookout for that. But the biggest catalyst that you need to look for is any news about FDA clarification on hemp and, it's, and in terms of uh, edible products in the United States. Uh, so that whether that be, you know, CBD and stuff like that. So whenever there is any news about the FDA providing clarification and clear guidance on that, uh, especially if they say, you know, everything is a go, that's going to be a nice, nice little catalyst uh, for the cannabis industry, and especially Tilray specifically. Um, so uh, Tilray's position to distribute product all over the world and like I said before, Port Portugal is a key area. Um, uh, and once they get the go-ahead to import raw material, they c this can further impact the their bottom line in a positive way. Said that said that before. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, oh, so we know what happened with Tilray since the IPO. So Tilray's IPO was priced at like $17 a share and right out the gate that thing came marching and I mean marching as you can see from the chart here I mean it was an exponential move up to a high of $300 from, for in a matter of a couple of months. Um, so just the cra one of the craziest moves I'd ever seen in my short time in the markets. So, but as quickly as it rose, it fell, you know, pretty pretty quickly as well. 
um, uh, it, it actually fell from that $300 range down to below 150 in a matter of like two days. So lots and lots and lots of selling off, lots and lots of hype about this company. Um, and as you can see now, it, it, you know, it's been struggling to, you know, get back into the $30 range. It's been trading, you know, between like uh, 18 to 23 for the past, you know, several months now. Um, <clears throat> but some big news that occurred when Tilray was in the like, about in this range here from like 80 to 110 or so, something like that, 120. Um, Privateer, one of its big backers, announced that they were going to hold their shares. Basically, they were going to keep their position in Chilray. So that was a great catalyst, but it was very short-lived as that came about when the first lockup expired. So that lockup expiration um, caused a, uh, an even greater sell-off in the share price. And as you can see, it has yet to recover from that. Um, so recently, though, in terms of privateer, Tilray and privateer merged. So this is sort of like a way that investors could potentially interpret it as trust, further trust in the company, maybe. Um, but the biggest thing to keep in mind is that there will be another lockup expiration at the end of this year. So that could be a big money-making opportunity, potentially, um, as, uh, let's see, let me read it from the article here. Each privateer equity holder who receives shares of Tilray stock in the merger is subject to a lockup allowing for the sale of such shares only under certain circumstances over a two-year period. At the end of the first year, to the extent not already released at Tilray's discretion, as a result of the aforementioned offerings or sales, 50% of total shares subject to the lockup will be released. So... Privateer had a big, pretty big position in Tilray. Um, I'm not, I, I forget what the dollar amount was, but at the end of this year, somewhere around that time, uh, because that's when the merger happened, like around December, um, around fourth quarter of 2019, 50% um, of those shares, the lockup, they'll be released. So this typically, typically a lockup expiration causes a further downward move in the share price. So that's something that you can look out for uh, in, the, in the distant future, but not too distant future. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see. And just to go back over some things to watch for, um, sales in the United States. So Manitoba Harvest is going to be a big big thing for that, um, a big part of that. Also, FDA um, clarifications on edible products. Uh, Lockup expiration, we just talked about that. Any sort of changes in inventory. Um, for instance, they sold around 60% of harvested products in 2019. Um, and so... Uh, of course, uh, a, a decrease in inventory um, could be seen as a positive thing. It depends on, you know, wh where that stuff is going, um, whether it be, you know, being used for uh, extracts or uh, products being, more products being sold. Um, and keep in mind that the, the cannabis industry has been beat down bad in 2019, and it's not it's not only because of the companies themselves, but it's also because of Canada's rollout. So it wasn't nearly as smooth as anticipated. And so uh, supply chains were 
definitely impacted in a big way. Um, but I don't want to make this video too long, so I wanted to um, just talk about a couple of uh, levels to watch um, long term. So um, let's see here. About 165. I'm not even concerned with this up here because it was kind of those are kind of outliers. Uh, and even this 165 level is is sort of an outlier, uh, but more but much less so than this this uh, these two candlesticks here. Uh, so 165, about 155 as well. Um, I would say about 123. 115 99 and about 99 that's when um the, i remember the privateer news dropped that they would be holding all their shares and i want to say tilray popped from like 90 up to like 99 maybe maybe a little bit over 100 before falling again um uh, about this $81 range to, you know, $72 range. Um, but it's got, it's got a long ways before it gets up there. Uh, but, um, 32 is definitely significant. And as you can see, it hasn't been, it hasn't cracked the thirties since, um, about third quarter of 2019. So, um, but I would say, once Tilray can get past, I'd say I'd look for it to get past uh, up above maybe about 25, um, and then we can possibly see 30s again. But um, I, I really, I really, I would say I'm not really. Um, super concerned about Tilray until it can until it can get to 25 and uh, it's it so far it has been unsuccessful in demonstrating that to me um, for quite some time so uh, as you can see it is touched 25 a few times but it, it hasn't managed to uh, stay above that level or maintain that that level so um, that's a that's a very key level to watch out for uh, in the future, um, but that's all I got on my case study with with Tilray. Like I said, uh, if you want to know how I scored Tilray in my uh, project of attempting to analyze every single uh, publicly traded cannabis company, get with me. Um, like I said, it. it access to this and it's an ongoing access thing where you can get at where you can uh, get updates in real time um, it's $25 a month um, but like I said if you have any questions let me know um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video and remember that the dream never sleeps good night y'all